The U.S. General Services Administration, comprised of the Federal Acquisition Service, along with the Public Building Service, is the source for all of the products and services the government procures and makes available to government agencies and federal organizations. FAS operates at the core of the GSA mission, leveraging the buying power of the federal government to acquire the best value for taxpayers and federal customers. GSA's vision is to achieve a zero environmental footprint. That means GSA will eliminate its impact on the natural environment and use its government-wide influence to reduce the environmental impact of the federal government overall. GSA is also using its purchasing power to drive the market to produce a wider variety and greater number of products, services, and workspaces that are more sustainable. The GSA also has a history of commitment to sustainable design and green building practices. They're in the vanguard, and beginning in 2003, they set a standard of achieving a minimum of LEED Silver certification for all new construction, renovations, and interiors. What makes this interior office renovation project unique is that it is one of the first interior renovation projects targeting LEED Gold certification. LEED stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. LEED sets the standard in green building. The LEED criteria cover six distinct categories of sustainable construction. It takes into account a site that has excellent access to public transportation, making sure the building is as energy and water efficient as possible with minimal environmental impact, using as much recycled material as you can, and producing as little waste as possible. LEED also focuses on a healthy environment. Clean air, good light, and thoughtful design can help people inhabiting space to be more productive. It can even help improve overall health. With the renovation of several floors of offices in New York City's Federal Plaza, the GSA FAS looked to create a model for all sustainable future agency renovations. It is anticipated to be among the first LEED Gold certified interiors of a GSA owned and occupied workplace nationwide and the first of the regions. In the design and execution of this sustainable environment, the GSA FAS has created a vibrant case study that brings the spirit of their mission and vision vividly to life. We're thrilled to be working with the GSA on a project such as this because they have taken a leadership position in sustainable design. We've set a lofty goal on purpose. It's a responsible social thing to do anyway, and so people are contributing. We're going to be taking away excuses from other government agencies and from industry who say, you can't get there. GSA is the largest landholder in the United States. We need to be the role model. So they feel that this is an opportunity for them to develop and grow the green economy. A LEED certified interior leverages cutting edge technologies and innovations to minimize a building's environmental impact while enhancing the productivity of the workers inhabiting it by providing cleaner air, better light, and a design that is responsive to their comfort and work dynamic. Those innovations start with the design itself. You can reach up to 16% more efficiency in your work in a sustainable work environment. Give us a little description of what it was like and how it compares to this. It's quite a different atmosphere. When I first came here, everything was pretty much blocked off. We had six foot high cubicle walls. Uh, you're walking as a, almost like a mouse through a maze. But I felt like a rat in a maze trying to find something. It was, it was a pretty major challenge. I was piled high with uh, books of requirements, and after I'd sifted through those, I found that uh, there was still actually a fair amount of freedom available there. So we were trying to make sure how do we balance that with the efficiency and effectiveness of our jobs. So the first steps in creating a sustainable workplace are collaboration, process, and the design itself. What other kinds of innovations are involved? Let's take a look. 50% of the lead points are achieved during the construction process. We contracted a firm to, to collect and sort and recycle as many of the, of the materials that we use as possible. Which the recycling plant weighed everything and gave us a certificate that all this material that was taken out of 26 Plaza was recycled. 
paper products were recycled and metals were recycled. The existing furniture that was in the space was even repurchased and refurbished by a furniture installer so that it will be used again at a later date so there was nothing wasted. During the demolition we have uh, air filters up, Mervade filters are called and they get put to covering the existing ductwork so none of the dust and debris gets into the, the existing ductwork of the building. One of the most important things is there's more oxygen in the air. We have had the pleasure on this project of passing all of the indoor air quality testing the first time around. The types of paint on the wall include low VOC or no VOCs, so there's no off-gassing. So VOC is a volatile organic compound, which is actually poison. The smell that, that typically comes from painting that's and actually... And gives you a headache. Exactly, and all of the adhesives used to adhere the carpet to the floor are low VOC so that they don't have odor and they don't give you that, that headache. This floor we have the uh, ability to open it up all the way around and keeping it really open was a, a big driving force of the design process. This is a very different setup than you would see on other GSA floors or other government floors. We've really emphasized lowering things, opening up daylight and view access. It's important for the lead component. Uh, there's additional lead points that you can get for bringing in office furniture that is a low level or low horizon. The collaborative spirit really is enhanced by it. It gives you more feel of camaraderie. It's really easy to bounce ideas off of each other. Increases and improves communication naturally. Is it harder to hide from the person you report to? Definitely. <laughs> in part it actually helps with communication between the individual employees in the space, but it also allows for you know greater views to the outside and allowing more natural uh, daylight into the space. It is wide open and I sit next to the window here and it gives me a chance to look out the window, whether it's snowing, raining, sleet, hell. Boats come by there, you get to see the cruise line. I got a million dollar view. I got people that spend millions of dollars for a view of Manhattan, and I get to see it every day. The connection to the outside is very important in being comfortable and positive and efficient in working in a space. How does daylight harvesting work? There's actually a sensor built into those light fixtures and it does readings to see how much quantity of the daylight is actually coming into the space and will adjust the fixture up and down depending on the actual quantity. So if we have a bright day outside, the lights dim automatically. If we have a cloudy day, rainy day, the lights get brighter automatically. So the light you're having in your workspace stays the same no matter what kind of day it is. Well, Elliot, we have a multi-design swing arm featured light here and provides a very good dome of light for all your, you know, reading and work needs. The older we get, you know, how weak our eyes get, so. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what part or what percentage of what we're looking at comes from recycled material? Well, each part and piece has its own percentage, but as a majority, I would probably say about 60% of the actual product comes from recyclable material. That's the biggest plus, that we're not filling up our landfills. Chair, comfy. Oh, I smile, I'm smiling, you know. And it's made from 60 plus percent environmental recyclable material. This is actually the break room. And one of the great things about the break room is this great countertop material. It's made from 100% recycled glass and it's actually manufactured nearby um, by a company called Istone that has their warehouses in Brooklyn. And the floor? The floor is actually a great product because it has 65% uh, recycled cork and cork is considered a rapidly renewable product. There's a certain percentage of materials that needs to come from within a 500 mile radius of, of the construction site, which in this case is Manhattan. It's called a regional material and it, it decreases the impact on the carbon fo um, footprint of shipping materials here from you know, all over the world or all over the country. There's, there's actually bicycle racks in a couple of the, the copy rooms here that counts as a, a credit for lead. We have another space outside here where if you come to work and it's a summer day and you bike to work or walk to work, you can shower up and clean up before you come to the workspace. We have a lot of other things that are behind the scenes that make it very much a green building. We are going paperless, gradually eliminating all the printers. Everything from the, the shell to the chair is, is the way I like to think of it. 
I think that employees can see that they're part of a bigger movement, that the little things that they do day to day um, are contributing to, to higher arching goals of, of sustainability. This is really something that's contributing towards saving the environment. There are people that will literally gravitate to this agency because they want to be part of an agency that has that as their vision, that we're leading the way in green and sustainable. I'm Elliot Forrest. Thanks for joining me at the new FAS offices in New York City.